The Neomorph is the common name given to the endoparasitic organism Plagiarus ciliarius. Like their Xenomorph cousins though, the Neomorph is really the combination of two subspecies. The before mentioned Plagiarus ciliarius, or the adult form, and Tachinidae tabularium, which is a carrier organism that delivers the P. ciliarius to a viable host. These form the first two stages of the Neomorph life cycle. The moats and the egg sacs they spawn from are the second and first stages of the Neomorph species life cycle respectively. While at first glance appearing unassuming, the egg sacs and their moats are virulent and an extremely dangerous complex organic organisms that form a symbiotic relationship with one another. So, in today's data log we at the project want to explain our current knowledge of these strange life forms the egg sacs, the first stage of the Neomorph life cycle, share many structural and physiological similarities with many fungal growth species. They are bulbous and pod-like in shape and have a rough outer texture with a round opening at their top. They look similar to the earth fungi species Lycopid and Piriform otherwise known by the nickname of the puffball. They also closely resemble two species identified in David's lab both being pathogenic fungi native to Paradise or Planet 4. At first it was suggested that the Neomorph species might have been a native fungus, however through later studies it was seen that the Neomorph life cycle was not unique to Paradise, but instead a natural result of the engineer's pathogen accelerant coming into contact with the numerous bacterial or fungal life forms across the Middle Heavens region of space. The Neomorphic egg sacs are roughly a few inches tall and wide, or similar to around the size of a chicken's egg, their coloration can vary but are in general dark brown and greenish. The egg sacs can be found, usually in clusters, attached to local structures, such as the base of a tree trunk, a rock and even in the walls of the cave. The moats, the second stage of the Neomorph life cycle, resemble fungal spores or even a puff of pollen. The reality of them is that they are a synchronized swarm of highly infectious particulate macro-organisms that form into a cloud of pulsating shapes. The egg sac and moats form a relationship that is similar to that formed between the species Plagiarus prepotens and Manumola noxhydria, or the overmorph and facehugger. The egg sac's main function is to store and protect the pathogenic moat spores until the time comes that a suitable host enters the vicinity of the egg sac. During this time the pods have some kind of ability to sense a nearby host. Their method of doing this seems to be via direct contact. The contact can be a simple disturbance to their surface structure or through full destruction to the pod. Nevertheless, once the disturbance is made the egg sacs spew forth a burst of neomorphic moats into the air, similar to fungal spores. These moats act together to infect a host. It is not certain whether the egg sacs are able to produce another batch of moats after their original is ejected. Studies are still lacking in this department. These tiny macroscopic black particles seem to be able to float and move through the air in conjunction with one another. They appear to have a hive mind of sorts, or at least can somewhat coalesce into a dense cloud of particles that are able to move towards a host. It's unclear how they do this, it's possible they have some kind of hive-like intelligence. Once located the moats move in on an unprotected orifice of the host's body. This can be nearly anything, but they tend to go for the easily available one, like the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, or an open wound. Once entering the body of its host, the moats or Tachinidae tabularium inject the genetic material of Plagiarus ciliarius into their bloodstream. Some studies have also suggested a link between the mutagenic ability of the moats to the engineer's pathogenic accelerant, which is something we will address later in the data log. Once the genetic material has begun to mutate the host's white blood cells, a tumor-like growth begins to develop. The location in which the tumor develops seems to be random amongst the hosts that have been studied so far. For some it develops in the throat, some in the chest, others still in their back. Due to the moats entering the bloodstream it seems like the location of development is likely wherever the blood flow moves them. As this tumor develops it becomes the third stage of the Neomorph's life cycle, the blood burster, something that we plan to cover in a data log very soon. When talking about the Neomorph species' origins, there is surprisingly more understood about them than most other xenotype creatures. The Neomorphs are genetically programmed to kill all other life forms. They are believed to have been a deliberate creation of the engineer race, a natural result of use of their pathogen accelerant on an ecosystem. Their likely purpose and design is cleaner. After deployment of the engineer's pathogen accelerant onto a planet, and after it has decimated a large portion of the known botanical life, the remaining pathogen will mutate pollen, fungi, and microbial life to create Tachinidae tabularium, 
or the egg sacs. These generate around the location in clumps and cluster, and as stated before will go on to generate Plagiarus Celerius, the Neomorphs. After the pathogen has started the job of wiping out all living creatures, the Neomorphs are there to finish the job, eradicating any other species left behind, clearing the planet. A powerful and efficient biological weapon that is very good at its job. Following the death of an adult Neomorph, the creature's corpse will begin a unique form of decomposition. As its body breaks down, the matter forms into new egg sacs containing their own moats ready to continue the life cycle. The first recorded encounter with the Neomorphs was on the planet Paradise. Following David 8's deployment of the engineer's pathogen on their city colony on Paradise, the remaining pathogen settled into the ecosystem and generated egg sac clusters all around the planet. Notably, David had conducted studies on two very similar native pathogenic fungi species, the Clostridio tetoni and Unisural Danafordia. It's likely these are just some of the native species that came to be infected by the pathogen generating the egg sacs. Eventually, the USCSS Covenant would arrive at the world after receiving a rogue signal of unknown origin and intent. Two members of the crew would come into contact with these egg sacs and the subsequent modes released from them. One interesting fact of the moats is that smoke seemed to disturb their ability to communicate with one another. This obstruction to their normal movement suggests that smoke or even fire is most likely a way to hinder the moats or outright prevent them from infecting a host organism. Immolation would likely be effective against the egg sacs as well and studies have concluded that liquid nitrogen can do the trick at halting their metabolism, that is until they defrost. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, Jack Fleming Jr. and Scott Jardine, or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia and Vladimir Chernikov. But until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.